Howdy there folks, I'm Gene of RPG, and welcome to Provoka, our second town of Final Fantasy 1. Hi there! Please help us! <laughs> with... with what? What's the matter? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Whoa! That guy's got a mohawk. Those blasted pirates, they're running around looting and pillaging like they own the place! Looks pretty normal to me. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the shops here. So, here we have level 2 spells. We've got Blizzard, uh, the Ice Elemental spell. Uh, it's slightly... See, that is one thing about this version of the game that I do wish it did, is gave you a general damage range that the spell does, because that's something that previous versions of the game did. But it doesn't do that. It is slightly more powerful than fire or lightning, uh, one. Or I guess, I guess in this version it's fire and thunder. Blizzard is slightly more powerful than them, but only slightly. Uh, dark, which blinds all enemies with darkness. Darkness in this version of the game, I don't believe is bugged. I'm pretty sure it's not, actually. In, F in the original release, and as well as many, many other Final Fantasy games, the darkness status condition, or blind, is completely bugged and doesn't work. Temper. Temper is phenomenal. It raises one character, or whoever you cast it on's, uh, attack power. You can keep casting this turn after turn on a character and continually raising their attack power. It's almost disgusting how good it is. So much so that I want to get one for uh, Bobby and one for Ted. <laughs> but that's it for the black magic shop uh, I forget what the other spell that was there was actually I should have probably read that let's go back and look slow it reduces the uh, it reduces all enemies number of attacks I don't see this work very often I don't think it's very good myself really the only spell that I actually think is worthwhile here uh, is temper because we're not gonna be using blizzard basically ever All right, but in the weapon shop you can buy a hammer Woo! a broadsword which is more powerful than the rapier uh, By a fair bit actually, but it's also 450 gil Eh, I wouldn't spend it if you have a warrior or more than one warrior, you can buy battle axes. Less accurate than the broadsword, but slightly more powerful. I think the broadsword's a better choice. Uh, scimitar. You could save on money and get that. It's a little stronger than the rapier as well. Uh, the scimitar is usable by the thief, however. Uh, the, the, poor, the poor thief. It can't equip anywhere near as many of the weapons as the warrior can. But it does, it, it, <clears throat> it will eventually get to where it can equip plenty of pretty good weapons. It's an investment class. It doesn't start to shine until late game, unfortunately, and, well, I'll get to that when we get to it. Here we have the White Magic Shop, which has Blind Na. I don't recommend this spell because, well, you can just buy eye drops and just use those and not have it take up one of your three spells that you get for level two spells silence it casts silence on all enemies which prevents them from using magic i've only seen this work a couple of times and i it's so infrequent it's not worth it null shock reduces the lightning damage by half for the entire party this spell is actually pretty darn nice but i don't have the money to get it yet which means we'll have to come back for it invisible raises a single target's evasion stat uh, which can be helpful. It's it's more helpful than you might think. But anyway, of those, Null Shock is the only one I actually care about. How am I on money? Oh, I've got plenty. Okay. Well, there's some pirates, but uh, I'm not done looking at the shops, so we'll deal with them later. In the armor... Armor... Yeah. Armor. Uh, in the armor shop, there's leather armor, chain mail, which we already have chain mail, and it's great. There's the iron armor, which is pretty spendy as you can see uh usable by the warrior and only the warrior 
but it's pretty darn good. In fact, it will last you quite a while. That said, I don't recommend purchasing it. At least not yet. And then, of course, there's the item shop, which has your standard items. And so, I guess maybe I should go ahead and go down the list here. Potions, I've already explained what they do. High potions are better potions. They restore 150 HP. Once again, in the original difficulty and the NES difficulty, the original difficulty of the Origins version of Final Fantasy 1 and the NES version of Final Fantasy 1, high potions didn't exist. Ethers! Restore one MP for each magic level. What that means, what that means is that it restores one spell slot for every single uh, level of spell that your your character that you use it on has. They're phenomenal, and they're probably what makes this game way easier, way easier than a lot of versions of this game. This is a pretty easy rendition. But for for example. Let's say I used a level 2 spell slot and a level 1 spell slot on Bobby here. I use an ether; it will restore one level 1 spell slot and one level 2 spell slot. If I used one of every single spell slot up through 8, well then it would restore one of each of them. It's pretty darn useful. Phoenix Downs are also one of the things that make this version of the game really, 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 honestly a lot better. Because uh, what Phoenix Downs do is if a character in your party gets KO'd, well, you can use a Phoenix Down and bring them back up to 1 HP. Uh, this is something that did not exist, again, in the NES version or the original difficulty of the Origins Edition. And that sucked. <laughs> that sucked, because you'd have to take them either to a church, which I haven't shown yet, I'm sure we'll see one, or you'd have to use the Life Spell, which is a relatively high-level spell slot. Antidotes, Cure Poison. Uh, these were in in the NES version, if I remember correctly, and oh, are they fantastic. Eye Drops, they cure darkness. Echo Grass cures silence. Gold Needles cure stone, which is petrification. Remedies cure everything except for stone and KO. I don't know why they don't cure stone or KO. You're not gonna need remedies. Just throwing that out there. Sleeping Bags restore a little bit of the party's HP. Which it, when you use it in the field, which is nice. Tense wrist, I've already explained what they do, but they're better than sleeping bags and they're only a little bit more expensive. Cottages fully restore HP and MP of the entire party and they're fantastic and they're also expensive. Items are, fan, are just so good in this version of the game, I cannot help but want them. Anyway, hang on pirate guys, I want to go and take a nap at the end before we fight you. What fight? Did I say that out loud? I mean, talk to you. Alright. Uh, now that we're ready, hi. You've got cannonballs of steel to be taken on the great pirate Bicky. Kill all them boys! I I Captain, we'll make your bone go crunch. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that is a lot of pirates. Also, they kind of look like Vikings rather than pirates. Uh, so these guys, they're actually not very hard at all. But the fight will take forever if I don't use the uh, fast forward feature, so we're going to do that. They have, I believe, about 30 HP if I remember correctly. Or maybe it's 25. I know they don't have very much HP at all. They're they're very easy to beat. Like, I probably didn't actually need to rest up at the end, but I mean, better safe than sorry, right? 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 Yeah. But there we go. We defeated the pirates. I be most sorry, young masters. I'll be making no more fuss. I swear. I, I, I want you to take me ship for your troubles. Can you find it in your heart to forgive an old pirate? And, uh, yeah! Now that we've completely slaughtered his crew in the streets, uh, we took his, his, his boat. No, but I also don't really care. I got your boat. 
We're skipping town, boys. Let's go. But yes, after you defeat the pirates, you now have access to a boat. Yay! The boat... Well, for one, can get us into battles. Here we have Buccaneers, stronger versions of the pirates we just beat up. Basically, everything on the ocean or in the water is weak to lightning, for the record. And as you can see, yes, they are much tougher than the pirates that we just fought. Uh, the Buccaneers, though, I do believe have a chance of dropping a Saber. I forget if the Saber was the we was one of the weapons we saw, or if that was the Scimitar. But they have a chance of dropping that. Uh, anyway. The boat can only dock at ports like that one. Or at rivers, but you need a canoe first. Which, uh, we're not gonna be getting a canoe for a good while. Here we have a shark, probably the most dangerous thing in the water we're going to see for a while. And a Sahagin Chief, which is also pretty dangerous. Uh, the sharks are just really hard-hitting, relatively beefy fish. Like, we've already done over 100 damage to the stupid shark, and uh, it's still not dead. So, yeah, just something to keep in mind. A very notable difference in this version of the game versus other versions that I've personally noticed is... You'll note that we technically are up to level 3 spell slots already. That's very much different from what I remember. If I remember correctly, right about now, we'd be at, a, at level 2 spell slots, not quite at level 3. Uh, here we have two sharks, uh, some Sahagans... Sahagans? Sahagans? How do you say their name? I always say Sahagans, but I, I think that may not be right. Anyway, we have them, and then we have Big Eyes, which is just a couple of really big eyeballs. Uh, they can use Gaze, which can paralyze characters. It doesn't always work, though. But uh, it can be pretty lethal if it happens to you in a fight like this, where there's multiple sharks, and the Sahagans aren't a big deal, but I'd recommend taking out the weak things first. So that way the sharks are free to be dealt with by Billy, Bobby, Betty, and Ted. There we go. We survived. Yay! Exciting, right? <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe it's not all that exciting, but oh man, I remember I I absolutely loved this. I I do like Final Fantasy 1. Anyway, before we get going, we're technically have to go. Uh, I do want to bring attention to the bridge because this bridge here because you can sail under it. You have no idea how long it took me to realize you can sail under that stupid bridge. So, unfortunately, in that fight, uh, Ted died. <laughs> but no, it's so sad. He was so young. So young. He's only... He hasn't even been alive for an hour yet. But, uh, that's okay. That means I'll get to show off the church soon enough. For now, though, I want to go up to this cave. Because this is Matoya's cave. We could have come here earlier on our way to Provoka, but uh, that broom is moving on its own. Frontwards, backwards, any way you see. Such a strange spell to swish swishery. Lizdna luck luck swish swisheroo. All right. Well, if you read it backwards, it says cancel and ZL. Alright, so, if you hold ZL and press, in this case, it's the B button, it brings up the, uh, more detailed world map. But, uh, you probably, which, holy crap, I didn't even realize it shows you every single entrance into things, so, <laughs> oh, that's funny. 
That's that's funny. I wasn't actually expecting it to show all that. Anyway, though, <clears throat> you've probably noticed that there's a there's a mini map in the top right. No other version of this game has that. Ouch! My eye! My eye! Ow! I can't see a blasted thing without my crystal eye! Who could have stolen it from me? Uh... I don't know, but I'm gonna take your chests. To get a potion! Another potion! And I think an antidote. Yeah! <laughs> You're gonna want to remember Matoya here for later. Anyway, yeah, that mini-map up there on the top right did not... Ex it, it wasn't present in any other release of the game, as far as I'm aware, other than the Pixel Remaster, and it makes things a heck of a lot easier than it used to be. Not just for the world map, but for everything. Which is something that I have seen a lot of people complain about in regards to... Uh, the... Specifically this Pixel Remaster. I haven't looked into the other ones yet as far as what people have said. Uh, a lot of people don't like how much easier this game is in comparison to the NES version of the game. And you know what? In some ways, I can understand. One of the complaints I've seen, though, is some it were people complaining about the encounter rate being lowered. And I don't know what they're talk what like what they're talking about. Believe me, it's not fun having to spend five hours going through a dungeon because you get into an encounter every single step. And so I I will disagree till the cows come home as far as the encounter rate being being lowered ruining the game. But anyway, this is the church. You talk to this bishop person and you can pay money to resurrect whoever's dead. So uh, they're going to resurrect Ted, Ted, who's the one who walked in here to ask, Can you resurrect me, please? <laughs> Little weird, but whatever. Anyway, let's go ahead and stay at the inn as well. But yeah, there's there's a number of things that I can understand, that I can understand why people don't care for the difficulty decrease. Or rather, what I should say is I can understand why some people, where some people are coming from with their complaints. I don't agree with the whole encounter rate thing being, being a reason to get a, the, being one of those reasons. I can understand the map, the mini map on the top right, however, because well, the truth is things were quite different back then. For instance, in a dungeon, uh, if you wanted to have a map, you kind of had to make it yourself. Those days are long gone, though, and I do think it's it's a good thing that they have the mini map. But I can understand where some people are coming from. Anywho, this is our next town, Elfheim. Yeah! Hi there! I just don't know what we can do. Please help our prince. Well, maybe. Well, uh, maybe we can. We'll have to see later. Hi! I am a sage. When the time is right, the future is revealed to me. I shall wait patiently until then. Okay, you do that. Anyway, there are more shops here! <laughs> so, let's start with the weapon shop. Here you can buy some pretty basic stuff. Iron nunchucks, these are things for the monk, should you not want him to be punching, though I recommend having him punch. A dagger, it's a slightly stronger knife, that's about it. The crossier, I believe only the warrior and the monk can equip. And then there's sabers, which are, well, I think I've already talked about them, but they're... They're okay. We, I don't want to buy any of that. 
And then there's also this item shop here. Or I'm sorry, I said item shop. Armor shop. Which has the arm... The... Uh, the um, no, the iron armor. Which I am going to want to get at least one of. It also has copper armless, which is... Which is armor that technically anybody can wear, but it's specifically armor that you're going to want to probably have the mages wear. There's an iron shield, which is actually pretty cheap and not a terrible choice, as well as a helm. But uh, I'm not really going to worry about any of those just yet. Well, except for the iron armor. I do want the iron armor. Because again, the iron armor is actually going to last a really long time. Alright, there's the item shop. It has all the same kinds of stuff. However, an important thing you will notice in Elfheim here is that there are four magic shops instead of just two. There are two black magic and two white magic. That is because, well, I went to the higher level one first, but that is because they have level three and level four spells, and you'll notice how expensive they are. <laughs> but this is the level, the level four black magic shop. Let's get into these spells. There's Sleepra has a uh, <clears throat> it's a spell to put one enemy to sleep. I have never seen this spell work, no matter what version of the game I'm playing. So I wouldn't worry about it. There is haste, which doubles one ally's number of attacks. This spell is incredible and pairs very nicely with temper. Uh, there is confuse, which causes enemies to turn on each other. Much like sleep, I've never seen this work on anything. And then there's Blizzara, which is the second tier of ice elemental spells, and uh, it hits all enemies. It's very nice, but it's also very expensive. In the level 4 uh, white magic shop, we have Poison, uh, which cures poison, which seems like a good, uh, a good spell, and in theory it is, but for the amount the amount that it costs to get the actual poison spell, you can buy enough antidotes to, that you're never going to have to worry about poison again. So, I don't really think it's all that good, personally, as a result. There is fear, which drives all enemies away in terror. It basically instantly kills them, although I don't think you get EXP if they run away. Uh, I, I don't really care much for it. It's, eh, whatever. Null Frost is the real one here that's very nice, and it reduces ice damage by half for the entire party. Very much like my feelings as far as Null Shock go. Uh, it's a pretty useful spell, and one we will definitely be returning to get, but we don't need necessarily right this moment. Vox! Uh, it, it cures silence. Uh, much more useful in some other versions of the game, because Echo Screens did not exist. Echo Screens? Are they called Echo Screens in this or Echo Grass? I forget. Regardless, uh, those did not exist in other versions of the game. Although, I forget if Silence was even a thing in the NES version. I'm tempted to say no. So, there is, even though I've mentioned this, uh, a lot of the NPCs and things that you can look at and talk to are very repetitive, very simple. That's because NES limitations. Uh, one thing that I've always enjoyed are these gravestones. Because, well, these two say just say they're gravestones. This one, however, says here lies Link. Yes, I'm assuming, and we're in Elfheim, and these guys look a suspicious amount like Link. I'm assuming that's an intentional joke. And uh, I've, I've always enjoyed that. I've always I found that rather humorous. But here we have the level 3 white magic spell shop. They have Cura, which restores more HP to a single target ally, which is very nice. They have Heal, which restores a tiny bit of HP to the entire party. It's basically using the first level Cure spell on the whole party, except this takes a level 3 spell slot. I don't think it's very good myself. Null Blaze, same thing as Null Frost and Null Shock. I think it's really useful. Diara reads a little closely to Diarrhea for my liking, but Diara is a stronger rendition of Dia, which deals damage to all undead enemies. Also, actually a very useful spell. Of these, the top three are ones that I want to get, but not just yet.
And then here we have the level 3 black magic shop, which has Fyra, which deals fire damage to all enemies. This is one that I'm definitely going to want to get, at least for uh, Ted. But I will want to get it for Ba... Or not... Yeah, Bobby. I'm getting their names mixed up. <laughs> it has Hold, which uh, paralyzes one enemy. Eh, eh. Thundara, which deals lightning damage to all enemies. And uh, Fokara, which lowers the evasion of all enemies, which... Eh. <laughs> the real shining things here are Thundara and Fyra. We don't need Thundara yet, although it does make sea travel a little bit less of a pain in the butt. Because again, almost everything on the sea and in the ocean is weak to lightning. Fyra, however, is the big one that we're gonna want. And did I put the knight's armor? Or the knight's armor? Ha! I'm jumping way ahead. The, the, yeah. I did put the armor, the iron armor, onto our warrior. Uh, as for the item shop, I'm down to three potions. I've been using them quite a bit. Uh, I have a tent. Here's the thing. We are coming up on our first money grinding session. There's only going to be two times that I need to actually... Is it only two? Actually, I take that back. I think it's three. Uh, there's only going to be three times that I need to actually farm for money in this game. Which, of course, I'm not going to make you guys watch me sit here and farm money. Are you kidding? I'm not that mean. Usually. But I did want to make sure to get Fyra first because, well, it does help with farming money. Here's the thing. My actual favorite place to farm money uh, has technically been removed in this version of the game. And this is the only version of the game where it's not there. And that makes me sad. But I'll go into all that stuff next time on Final Fantasy, the Pixel Remastered version. I'm Gene of RPG, and I'll see you guys then.